what is up everyone today we are back with another question from <laughs> from you uh this was posted by demon hunter a uh, really good question said sir i have a question it may sound dumb but how do you even use an art book uh can you say anything about it and uh, don't worry this is not a dumb question it's actually a pretty good question and as a matter of fact another person posted like two days after that a very similar question this was by william mclean again asking very good question this one i'm paraphrasing because it was a little bit of a longer comment um so he basically said anatomy books are are normally not like workbooks and so it's not like a step-by-step -step. it's normally just a lot of pictures and he goes on to say, I have a couple of anatomy books. I just want to know how to practice because I don't think I need more books. I just need to know how to apply the information. And and I, I understand this frustration. As a matter of fact, as you can see here, well, this is my sketchbook, but I have a few anatomy books myself. And so, and so the first thing I want to say is it's okay. You don't have to feel dumb. You don't have to feel stupid for having these anatomy books and going, okay, what do I do with them? <laughs> do, I, do I have to go page by page through everything and memorize this like I am at school? What should I be doing? Um, and yes, there are some of my anatomy books that just have a lot of pictures and all this type of stuff. So let, let's dive into this question uh, I'm gonna go through uh, basically some ideas about how you should be using anatomy books at least from my perspective and show you some of the things that I have been doing as well um, to help me get the most out of the anatomy books that I have so first of all I think it really depends on your needs um, and so there can be different needs and you need to determine where you are so there are some people that will be using anatomy books solely for reference. They are already pretty good at drawing and they just need to reference something. Oh, how do I draw that again? Um, and some books are better at that than others. And maybe some of those have just a lot of pretty pictures because people just need to see how the thing is drawn and not much explanation or even sometimes demonstration. Um, and I'm going to jump into these just a bit, but the second thing that you could probably need is learning. This is one of the steps that I am in. I need to learn the basic shapes of everything. So I need a book, uh, kind of like this one, that has not only the shapes, but a lot of different examples, a lot of different, uh, of the shape drawn in a lot of different positions. And lastly, the third point, which I think I also fall into, is sometimes you just need inspiration. So art books, anatomy books can just be inspiration as well. And these can also be uh, pretty pictures. For me, inspiration right now means <laughs> that I actually am having fun using the material. So if it's not causing me to have fun, um, I jump on to a different a different train all right that's that's just what I'm rolling right now fun is at the fun or enjoyment is at the very top of my list so here you go what you need to be doing to get the most out of your anatomy books or whatever art books you're using is first of all you need to determine what your need is which one of these categories you fall into and then you need to try and match a resource that meets that need. Now, here's the deal. And now I'll start going through some of the things that I have personally experienced and why I have several anatomy books myself. It's because sometimes you don't actually know whether the resource will meet your need or not. I started off with, I think this Bridgman Constructive Anatomy book. And here's the deal looking through this. There are a few drawings that get really complicated 
and uh, some of the drawings in, in this other book get complicated as well but here are a lot of cool pictures that seem to outline different things but one of the things that you will notice in this book is that there are not it's not clear exactly what's happening here what are they saying here i mean yes there's some structure things here so this was probably okay it has some examples i just found this book kind of boring and hard to so and i i i it didn't work for me i i found it like i don't want to be drawing all of this all of these very specific muscles um i don't know it didn't work for me so i moved on to another book this one here this one is very simplified and i think this was actually a really this is a really good resource for the absolute beginners you see it's very simplified having you do shapes i actually got pretty far in this book um all the way down to here where you may have seen some of these drawings in some of my previous sketchbook tours this one I really liked very simplified very good for learning um, but one of the things that this lacked and even this book here <laughs> that I found in this book is so if you notice I, I, I'll go back here again if you notice here, everything is disjointed, right? So we are talking about the eye. Yeah, let's go back. The eye is not a good one. We're talking about the arm. And you have examples of arms. You go on to the neck. There are examples of necks. <laughs> you go to the head. There are examples of head. But when do you put everything together, right? And... It kind of gets tedious just drawing heads over and over again and not really seeing everything come together. Um, one of the things that this book does really well that these other books don't is it constantly goes back to the entire body form. So, like for instance here, we're talking about arms, but they're showing the arms drawn in connection to the entire torso you have a whole torso here and on this page you have this entire torso down to the buttocks i mean it's it's putting everything together constantly and you're you're constantly getting a break from just the tediousness of drawing the arm design there's more arm design and again there are images of how it comes together in real life poses and like it's constantly being injected back into real life poses that you can see oh yeah that's how everything comes together you get into drawing uh, figures and this just increased the enjoyment factor for me so it's not just going the same routine I'm drawing an arm I'm drawing an arm okay now I'm drawing fingers I'm drawing fingers I'm drawing fingers it's no you're learning but you're also incorporating everything back into um, the entire figure and uh, one of the things that they do in addition to this is add humor in and uh, one of the things you can see here so that it's, it's constantly interesting poses trying to inject humor drawing some wrong things and like, don't do that so it's it's just more fun to interact with this material and so again frustration in the beginning because I actually went through two other anatomy books before I actually found one that met all my needs. So the first thing is, um, don't worry if you have an anatomy book and you tried it and it didn't meet your needs. It would be good if 
was some way you were able to find one that met your needs right off the bat, but it doesn't always happen. It didn't happen for me, um, and it may not happen for you, but don't give up. Keep on working through it to find one that works best for you. I found that this one works best for me, and I am just enjoying my process through here. Now, how am I using this to learn? What is the best way to use this book specifically? And how am I doing it? How am I approaching this? So here is how I'm approaching it. First of all, uh, I'm just gonna run through and then I'm gonna jump into my sketchbook here to kind of show some of the things that I've been doing. So first of all, in going through the books, I want to learn and understand the basic shapes. Uh, I want to be able to turn them. I want to be able to use them for construction. Um, and for this, I need lots of examples, which again, as you can even see from this page here, tons of examples. I'm not drawing everything. I'm going for understanding. Um, and I need to enjoy it, as I said, and then I try to implement in some drawings of my own, which is where things normally start falling apart, but I have a fun time doing it. And of course, most importantly, I draw whatever I want. So, because again, I'm, I'm fun is that is at the top of my priority list. So I get to draw whatever I want. So if I need to take a break and just do reference and see if I can um, draw references in a similar style and simplified manner and incorporate the things that I have been learning, I do that. And then I hop back into the mean studies and I go back and forth. And this freedom allows me to stay motivated and enjoy what I'm doing. So now <laughs> I'll probably do a uh, thing on on sketchbooks as well because I've had quite a few different ones now this is my third one and it's different and there are some pros and cons to all of these so maybe I'll do something like that um, so one of the things I'm doing is that focusing a lot on basic shapes focusing a lot on not getting caught up on accuracy too much just trying to get the main understanding of what's going on and then try to incorporate it into uh, my own drawings. So this would actually be one here where I try to incorporate everything that I have been learning so far. And this also would be one. And one of the things you're going to learn is that things seem very simple when you are um, actually learning it and drawing it from the reference and even with the reference in front of you just simply trying it again yourself things will start falling apart okay uh, so and and when I look back at it I go oh this should have been different the shoulder should actually be rotated slightly different um, some issues on this one but it's only through actually practicing it on your own and trying to apply it that you're gonna get better and better at what you're doing. Um, so these were pretty early on and pretty cool and I still doing a lot of pen. Um, here you'll see actually some of the images that you just saw from the book and you'll see how I'm making sure I understand the connection. What are these different boonie points that stick out at the elbow, um, getting the drawing in and then trying to apply them. So again, these are all some of my drawings from imagination going through, doing different tests, trying to put things together. So basically, basically these are some of the things I'm doing. I'm not going to be doing a sketchbook tour today, so, but just showing you the example of some of the things I'm doing, um, trying to figure out and understand how to simplify more and more um, the things that I am learning. And one of the things that was pointed out in in this book that was pretty important, um, I, 
think it is somewhere around here. Yes. So, basically on this page, um, if you take time to read it, they basically explain that there are a lot of different ways to try to simplify the shapes that you're using. And I had um, one of you ask a question that was actually pretty good asking about whether I'm still using boxes and mannequins and stuff like that. I use actually a hybrid of different things and that's one of the things they pointed out on this page that yes they will give you some shapes but you don't have to actually um, be kind of have it as a rule that you have to use these shapes in order to produce your figures you use shapes that work for you so for some people the boxy shapes work very well um, Brian Knox I think it is from from one of the ateliers he does an amazing job uh, with these geometric shapes when constructing the image when I try to specifically just totally use geometric shapes my figures come out really stiff and boxy and so I kind of use a hybrid from time to time of kind of more organic shapes and stuff like that uh, but basically that's what they're saying here you can use different strategies it doesn't always have to look the same but once it communicates the idea of what's happening with the arm you are good to go so it says you can try these but you can try your own and that's kind of the point of why I like this book as well it is it, it helps you to at least for me again it may not be the look for you but it helps me to break out of that mold of, oh, I need to get this exactly right. Um, and I think that's one of the main things that was holding me back. You may argue some people who are more into the more realistic drawings may prefer some of the earlier drawings from my learning experience where I was hyper-focused on getting everything super accurate. I know everybody has their own thing, but I like the freedom that is being injected into into the ideas in this book and even in their style of drawings. So again, if you want to get the most out of an art book, out of an anatomy book, first of all, you need to figure out what your need actually is. And then if your need is learning like me, you want to make sure that you're understanding exactly what they are doing. Make sure that it explains it. Um, make sure that it has enough examples and make sure that it's putting those examples together and showing you how everything fits together to produce an image, a figure that's in in some sort of pose that, <laughs> that will work in real life. Um, I, I think this is really important and most important, I'll leave you with this, the most important thing is to make sure that you have a tool or material that is fun for you. If you're not having fun, you're not gonna use it. <laughs> Don't burn yourself out not having fun. So I hope I hope this answers your question. If you have additional follow-up questions, put them in the comment, whether they are along this video or just another question that you have that you want me to answer. And I will do my best to get those answers for you. So see you in the next video. Bye.